If I ever go back to Wem, I'll visit the treacle mines again. The best treacle you can hope to find is the treacle that is mined in the treacle mines of Wem. They dig it up from where it's found in sticky gobules underground. They refine it and they ladle it into jars and label it. And happily they'll show you round. Uh, the mines are dark and smell so sweet, but you'll get sticky hands and feet. So they give you special clothes that cover you from head to toes. And when you've looked, and when you've looked, you get a treat. They'll let you sample treacle pud, and oh, it's so very good. And toffee apples you will find with toffee of the richest kind, made from when, tr when treacle as it should. The next time I go back to Wem, I'll visit the treacle mines again. The best treacle in the world you'll find is the treacle that is mined in the treacle mines of Wem. And that was by Elizabeth Leeper from a book, Barking at Nothing. And isn't it lovely? Prior to the mass production and refining of cane sugar from the West Indies, the only way to find treacle was to mine the natural molasses in treacle mines. A black unrefined treacle forms from fossilised beds of sugar cane, or ancient sugar cane, little like oil, and will often rise to the surface. Whilst this runoff is not commercially viable, it does indicate that deposits are trapped below in the seams. Uh, you see, the treacle is surrounded by layers of non-porous rock, and therefore these may be mined, normally by using underground mining techniques rather than strip mining. Um, treacle mining goes back to pre-Roman times. In fact, there was a healthy trade between England and Rome. A floor mosaic from 77 BCE was unearthed, uh, sorry, it's CE, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, was unearthed depicting treacle mining and refining. I've got to say that I find this description a little bit hard to believe. I don't know about you. A yes, climate change, the climate may have been very different in prehistoric times. But, you know, don't you find it more likely that these were ancient deposits of sugar beet and not sugar cane? After all, as a child, I, I, I remember a very large sugar beet refining factory in Alscott between Shrewsbury and Telford. <music> Wem's name is derived from the Old English Wham, meaning marsh, as marshy land exists around the town. The town is recorded in the Doomsday Book and consists of four manors. In 1202, Wem, Wem became a market town. <coughs> Wem, Wem supported the parliamentarians during the Civil War. Indeed, there was a parliamentarian garrison in the town, supported by a garrison at Stoke. It was attacked, attacked by Lord Chapel, in which, but the town held off the attackers. Uh, but in 1655, a fire destroyed many of the wooden, wooden buildings in the town. I thought that Wem's parliamentary support was due to Colonel John Bembo being from the town, but I find that he's actually from Newport, Shropshire. Nevertheless, I'm sure that it's he, it's he that took charge of the, the garrison. Nurseryman Henry Eckford cultivated the first, first commercial sweet pea in the town, and named the Eckford Sweet Pea. Thus, in Victorian times, the town was widely known as Wem, where the sweet peas grow. Now, my father was a keen sweet pea grower, uh, but I've got to admit, I've never heard of that local collection. Uh, brewing was initially a cottage industry and had been carried out in Wem from at least 1700. But by 1900, the Shrewsbury and Wem Brewery Company traded on a scale after acquiring a brewery in Noble Street, <coughs> previously run by Charles Henry Kiniston. The company was taken over in turn by Greenall Whitley and Company of Warrington. 
Of course, Kidderston is a famous across, uh, family across North Shropshire from middle class up. Not least due to the antics of Wild Kiniston of Nestcliffe. Lewis Carroll's adventures, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, 1865. Alice disbelieves the story told by the Dormouse about a treacle well at the Mad Hatter's tea party. Once upon a time, there were three little sisters. The Dormouse began in great hurry. <laughs> they lived at the bottom of a well. Uh, what did they live on, said Alice. Always took great interest in questions of eating and drinking. They lived on treacle, said the Dormouse. And now, despite Lewis Carroll having lived in fairly nearby Dursbury, it's believed that it's St Margaret's Holy Well at Binsey in Oxfordshire and not the mines in Wem that inspired him. Terry Pratchett wrote of a treacle mine in The Reaper Man in 1987 and Night Watch 2002. In the fictional disc world of Ankh Morpork, there's a street named Treacle Mine Road, with the current watch house, uh, analogous to a, analogous to a police station, found in the building formerly housing the entrance to the Treacle Mine. Extensive Treacle and Suet Mines also feature in the background to the Fifth Elephant, 1999. <laughs> So is this a true story? Well, I was certainly told it as a child. I seem to remember even being threatened that I'd have to work in the mines in Wem if I didn't study hard. Now, there are a few potential origins for this story. Uh, there was a Tanner's on Noble Street in Wem, and the process gave off a glutinous byproduct which looked a lot like treacle. Although it may be that this, this waste, which was largely <laughs> blood and skin and <laughs> hide, um, uh, may be that this waste from the tannery was mixed with waste from the nearby maltings, and this would produce a sweet-smelling black residue. Uh, certainly as a teenager, the Wem Brewery was a major brewery, and all over the uh, county... Pubs, pubs were tied, all of the county pubs were tied to Wem, um, whose beer did not have the best of reputations. Indeed, when travelling around Shropshire for local dances on my moped, it was often impossible to find a pub that did not serve Wem ales. And believe me, we tried extremely hard to do so. Although we were sad when the brewery closed in, 80, in 1988, and indeed happy when a micro, microbrewery opened again in the town. And whilst I think it's now owned by Jules, another brewer that was sadly missed and has reopened. Alternatively, a chemist shop in the town, run by a man called Mr Hayes, or was it Morgan? The manager was known as Fred Wilson and later George, and later uh, it became George Fruber. During the war, it was said despite food shortages, his shop never ran out of treacle, uh, leading locals to say that uh, he had a treacle mine beneath the shop. In the Morgan version of the story, he was actually selling the tannery and malting's waste. In 1984, Morgan Shops closed and was acquired by Harmer Developments and changed into courtyard of offices and shops. Uh, one has to tell, hope that there is no truth in the story, although it does seem somewhat credible. A somewhat tenuous connection is to the tar tunnel at Ironbridge Gorge Museum. A miner struck a gushing spring of natural bitumen which is a black treacle-like substance, when digging a canal tunnel for the Coalport Canal in 1787. The plan, as proposed by William Reynolds, was to connect the canal alongside the River Severn 
to the lower galleries of the mines below the Bliss Hill area. Uh, but after digging around 910 metres into the hill, the canal project was abandoned in favour of extracting the bitumen. Uh, the tunnel was a great curiosity in the 18th century, and bitumen still to this day oozes gently from the bricks. Uh, bitumen's chief commercial use at the time was to treat and weatherproof ropes and cork wooden ships. But small quantities were processed and bottled as Beaton's British Oil, a panacea remedy especially for rheumatism and scurvy. There are many stories of treacle mines all around Britain. In 1853, when 800 British Army soldiers were camped at Chobham Common, the camp included storehouses containing barrels. When soldiers left for the Crimea War and the site was mis mis dismantled, uh, they buried the barrels to avoid having to remove them. Some of these barrels contained treacle and Chobham villagers who discovered and removed these were called the treacle miners as a joke. And now... After I left university, I got a job fairly locally to Shrewsbury. Not that locally. I had to live in Wolverhampton. Um, <coughs> but then my, my job sort of disappeared, but I was sort of promoted or shifted. Anyway, I, I became a, a rep, a sales representative. And my first true area, I was given the southeast of England, not including London. And uh, I was in Surrey, and I was lost in Chobham. And I'd actually pulled up at a crossroads, because I got confused, because of quite close to Chobham is a place called Cobham. And I got confused between the two. But I was pulled up at a T-junction. Now, that is really illegal to pull up at a T-junction and look at a, a map, even though it was a very quiet road and there wouldn't have been any harm. But where I'm from in Shropshire, there's no doubt I would have um, received penalty points in my licence had I been spotted by the West Mercia police for doing so. So, well, I couldn't believe it. A policeman on a bicycle. Now, I hadn't seen a policeman on a bicycle since I was a very young child with a cape, you know, with a cape over his bike and his, his you know, his big hat on. And he rode up to me and I thought, oh my God, I'm going to get ticketed. And he, he looked at me and he said, um, and of course this is Surrey. He said, uh, good morning, sir. May I be of assistance to you? And I, I you know, I explained that I didn't know my chopping from a cobbin. And he, he laughed and said, oh yeah, it's a common mistake, sir. If you follow that road there, you'll get to Chobham, not Cobham. <laughs> well... A local tree folklore about treacle mining probably extends extended into history, back to the Roman Britain. One explanation is that the word treacle meant medicine, derived from the appearance of the Greek comparator meaning medicinal, leading to various healing wells around Britain being called treacle wells. Hence the one that... Um, that uh, though his Carol mentions, or is believed to have mentioned. Treacle later came to mean a sticky syrup after the popularity of honey-based drug called Venice treacle, and continued use of the old form in treacle wells led to the joke. At the village of Sabden in East Lancashire cultivated a considerable body of folklore about the local treacle mining in the 1930s. Oh, whilst the paper mills around Maidstone in Kent were known as the Toville treacle mines by the locals, Todley and Frittenden, also in Kent, are also rumoured to have had treacle mines. Tadley treacle mines has a local hotel named after them, and a Tadley treacle fair is held. Legend says that the name derives from using treacle tins to store money, because banks could not be trusted. The tins were buried around the village, therefore criminals mined for the tins. Hemel Hempstead in Hertfordshire 
has a legend of having a treacle mine and a local nickname since around World War I was Treacle Bumpstead, where also in Hertfordshire has a long supposedly had its own treacle mines. Treacle mines have been claimed in the twin villages of Trimley St. Martin and Trimley St. Mary in Suffolk. Uh, Talskiddy, Bisham, Nuneaton, Sway in Hampshire, uh, Ginge, in, or Ging, I'm not too certain how to say it, in Oxfordshire, Tongham, uh, Skidby, Ditchford, Crick in Northamptonshire, Debdale, Leicestershire, Dun Chidduck, and across other Somerset and, uh, and other locations of Somerset and Devon, Nantland and Bagrow in Cumbria, Pudsey in Yorkshire, and Croftomy in Scotland. Now, treacle mines are also celebrated, and you'll never guess who by. Yes, those perennial jesters who I love so much, the Morris Dancers. (laughs) 